everybody. We're here. Um, and there's more of us. We multiplied. <laughs> um, so I'm Susan Leonardson. Andrew Pierre. We've Dan got Havey. Dan Havy in the corner joining us. And then we have Jimmy Allen. Joining Do us work Dan Pierre. Like, oh. Well, that's how you guys are on my screen. And my screen is the only one that counts. So. <laughs> oh, man. Um, <laughs> um, so welcome to CF 2.0 Geek Out. We are going to be diving in on getting questions answered that we have so many of the questions. Um, a lot of them are going to be focused on membership sites because that is the workshop that we were, we were working through yesterday and we were running, we were discovering a lot and we were running into um, some things that we weren't sure about. So we were compiling our Jimmy list of questions and now we have Jimmy on to, to answer as many of those as he can. And then if you guys have specific questions, put them in the comments and then we'll see if we can get to them while we're here. And there's our very quick intro. Um, also, like, let's celebrate how awesome you guys are in this community. We just crossed over 600 members. Woo! Amazing. <laughs> and we're really excited about that because that means more of you um, for us to serve. So welcome, welcome. Okay, should we just dive in? Let's do it. <laughs> I did not organize these in any sort of way. So... Um, how do we want it? We probably should have discussed this before we hit live, but we're just going to no, no. Do we want to share a screen and work through this stuff? Is anyone prepared <laughs> for that at the moment? Andrea, yeah. do you have yours ready? Oh, we were, the that's the one we were working off of yesterday. Oh, yeah. Um, we pull that up while we... And, and one other thing. I have the list. I have the list. Okay, I will cool, share perfect. the list. I got the 2.0 up and running. Cool. Okay. Awesome. That is one thing. One too. thing I was gonna say is, did we tell everyone who Jimmy is, who he works oh, for, I what he does? <laughs> I totally. <laughs> uh, I totally asked before the live, and then I Jimmy's, totally watched that. Jimmy's a vagrant. We found him out on the street, and we gave him a sandwich, <laughs> and he agreed to be on the call with us today. You see, I was at the grocery store yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself? I'm talking a lot. <laughs> sure. Um, man, I really hope. You guys can't hear the barking dog downstairs, but you're um, good. I think all of, all of us got animals. Yeah, in we all house, have so dogs. Gonna yeah. be nice. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, hey, you guys. I'm Jimmy Allen. Um, I've been at ClickFunnels since it was a project in Todd Dickerson's basement. Um, it's kind of been like my passion, my lifelong career uh, since the ripe age of 18 to 19 years old. Um, I really love the ClickFunnels community. I love everything that like Russell and Todd have built, and I love. Sorry, so someone, someone keep going. Me. We're meeting. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, and you know, Susan and Andrea have built this really, really amazing community of people who are not just like they're not just like the average ClickFunnels user. They're like they're in it. Like they like everyone here is like, hey, I've had a really super specific niche question, and like I'm like, oh wow, like you guys are in the weeds, and um, and that's where I live all the time. So I'm really happy to be part of a group of people who are just like me who are like you know, like hey i'm trying to figure out how to like write a css id on this blah 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 and like whatever and it's like very very cool long story short i'm super happy to be here and uh help answer you guys' questions as best i can awesome Yay. we are glad we are so glad that you're here and jumped into our group and that we uh have you with us and we have just been able to ask you questions along the way and <laughs> sure. it's really yeah. been fun um okay so i am going to share my screen for a brief moment and then we'll switch over to andrea that's not the right awesome. button okay so i'm going to show our our list of questions but it is rough guys this is not polished at all okay. but these are our questions <laughs> so i think we're gonna just dive in to um going through kind of our experience as we were doing it yesterday and then as we're getting to these mm. spots or should we just I don't know should we just go down the list yeah let's just go down the list <laughs> let's just go down the list. okay all right you want to take on that first one Andrea yeah yeah so Hi. Andrea to start this first question off I actually love a little bit of context because in my okay. head, it's like, okay, well, there's sections, which sections go on a page, any page in ClickFunnels. And then there's module, which is a very specific, like, portion of a page inside of, uh, inside of a membership site or inside of a customer center and a course and all that. So, um, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I know there's like a... 
I don't know. Can oh. you guys hear a dinging right now? I can. Yeah. Is that is that coming from any of us or is that Dan? <laughs> no, it shouldn't be me. I'll, I'll turn everything back off again. Here. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Okay. We're good. There we go. So I muted um, Dan, I'm but I still heard and, it. And so sorry. <laughs> Okay, got it. I turned off all the things. Um, so, okay. uh, and I'm so sorry, Debbie, that you got cut off there. So let me uh, go to the visual that we were working off yesterday. And I would love, um, okay, go ahead. I'm with you now. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm just asking for a little more context um, because it's there's two things there that okay. seem like, okay, modules, they belong to courses and sections, they belong to pages. Um, so I'd love to see like where you were kind of grinding against these two things and you didn't, something didn't really match up in your head. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it revol revolves around that modules page, right, Andrea? We were wanting to. Well, just... I think it's two. Go ahead. <coughs> I, yeah, I think it's two things. I'm going to pull up that visual that we were working on with the structure. All right. Okay. It's coming up slowly, but surely here. So, and it might just be a semantics thing too, Jimmy. And that's why it's uh, getting lost in my brain. So, um, you know, we have sections as in the, the uh, editor sections, right? And so that is, that is what, at least in my mind, when I hear sections, that's the first thing that I go to. The editor, um, you know, uh, structure of sections. But then in current 1.0, we also have sections that are like the headers, right? In membership areas that are like the category that of them, right? Yes. I know now in 2.0 though, it seems like that concept of sections as a category, it seems like maybe that has been replaced with modules is the concept of categorizing things in mm -hmm. the course unit. And the term sections is just for in the editor, the sections, the sections right. part. Um, so I guess so first, first is that. Can, so that's, that is true. Yeah, that's true. So if I can help okay. like guide from top to bottom, like very, very top uh, in the hierarchy, you've got the customer center. This is where someone logs in, they have access to all of their courses that they may have per been purchased or enrolled in, products, self-service billing, you know, the whole nine yards. It's a, it's a customer to business kind of portal. Um, where the two can interface together. Inside of a customer center, you have courses, right? And a course could be like how how to run a chainsaw, right? And I'm teaching people how I pulled a Husqvarna or a Steel 500i out of the box and run it on a tree, okay? And they're okay. learning a thing. Inside of that course may have several modules or what were previously like sections or section headers, right? So it might be like module one, Perfect. like unboxing the thing. And each of those modules, there's like the, the top parent module. And we've done a thing now where you can have the parent module and a nested lesson or a nested sub module. Okay. Yep. Okay. We saw that. Yeah. And you can go up to three sub modules, right? From what we can tell. Yes. Okay. Yep. Got it. And then okay. the very, very base tier of that is the lesson. I just want to mention that just in case so it doesn't get blown over. Like lessons belong to modules, modules belong to courses, courses belong to customer centers, and customer centers are it's where the magic happens, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. So this visual then, would you, uh, is there anything that you would, I think this is what you just said. Um, so I think we did have it right in that modules equal sections and that that hierarchy is is true, at least on the last three boxes, what you just outlined. Yeah, and um, I, I don't know if it's, if it, is just semantics at this point, but also mentioning that you can have a nested module underneath a parent module. Right. Okay, uh, I think it's important. And so is each it one of those. Something different? I'm sorry. Oh, is it called something different, or is it just still module? No, it's just a it's a nested module. Okay, got it. And so I was going to ask, and each one of these modules then can have its own. It, it's it's its own page as well. So if somebody clicks on the module they're going to see whatever content you build for that module page. That's correct. Okay. And then you can have different templates for these different modules as well. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. And the same thing with lessons. Yes. Okay. Lessons and modules are uh, 
predominantly going to inherit from the template that is inside of your theme that's installed on the workspace. Now, it may be a little too like forward thinking. I'm going to talk about this in the future and then I'm going to bring it back to where we're at right now. In the future, you may have a specific course theme applied to one, two, maybe three different courses. You can have three different course themes on three different courses, maybe because you're teaching three different, you know, unique concepts. Um, and from there, your lesson and module templates will inherit from the theme applied to that specific course. Okay. The reality right now, though, tying it back to where we're at right now in the ClickFunnels universe <clears throat> is uh, your course uh, inherits by default the site theme. And you can go through with uh, like in like advanced settings cogs in, in specific places and do template overrides. So if you have a different like module page or lesson page that you want to apply to this specific lesson because you need to incorporate a special download link or it needs to be a different color that deviates from the palette on the theme, whatever your, you know, your reason might be, you have that optionality. It's just a little more advanced and it takes a little bit more mind tracking to keep track of where all those things are at. Okay. So if I were to summarize what you just said to me, if I heard you right, right now, the theme is associated with the, um, the site, the, the workspace. Is that right? So Let's the theme is associated with the workspace that's connected to the course that's connected to the module. Yes. Okay, cool. So um, so that would look like that. But in the future, if I have, so let's just say that um, this is that course one, right? So that theme bleeds all the way through. But in the future, if I were to have another course, I could potentially apply a different theme onto that course in the future, but it's it's not there right now. Correct. And I, okay. and I do, I do want to mention that let's say there is a different theme too. You can go build those different uh, pages and associate those template pages to course two. Um, but it's not, it's, it's not done in a nice and pretty way. It's done in like the advanced settings called drop down, like what page do you, or what, what template do you want to override here? And it's not the best experience. And that's why I'm saying this now. And, but also painted the future. Like, hey, we realize where it's at now and we did it out of necessity, but here's where it's going. I got it. So, so let me just okay. clarify. So what you're really saying is for every single lesson, every single module we make, we can set a different style guide for it. Template. That, you can make a template page template and override page. your template. So you make a template and then you associate your style guide with that. And then how do you build, and we're probably, I'm probably jumping the gun here, but how do Go you, it, okay, how do you take your template and then turn it into a page? So I want to create three different templates, let's say. How do I create three different templates? And because I have not been able to figure out how to clone a template and then get it to show up in the lesson editor. That is a very, very deep in the weeds. And I think having like maybe ClickFunnels 2 visual up here would be yeah, useful. Dan, do you have your account ready to show them what you're uh, trying to do? You, you know you, we always get into when we get... You guys, okay. Do you guys see my screen? Let's use, yes. Yes. Let's use yeah. Andrea's. Right. Okay. So Dan, go tell us like courses. what you're trying to do. Okay. So Andrea go, go into courses. Well, I don't see... Yeah. Here's the thing is I don't know if we have to go into courses because... If I want, we have, so you, you get out of the box, you get your, you get a lesson, and I think it's called like exam, example uh, lesson template is I think what it comes straight out of the box. My question is then how can I make three different lesson templates? It's up now, Susan, if you want me to. Okay. Okay. Do you guys mind if I take over the screen really fast? I think I might have something here. Oh, yeah, sure. Cool. Ooh, look at all this fancy technology. Can you guys see what I'm looking at here? Yes, now we can. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, so uh, really fast, just to show you guys where I was at. Um, I just went into the settings cog on module one, lesson one right here. Mm -hmm. And I just expanded the advanced settings on here. And it looks like 
if I want to do a style overwrite, I can associate a different style here. And then if I want to select a template page, I can do so right here. Now, I think, Dan, your question is, okay, you have all these template pages. No. How do I curate these template pages? That's the problem. I don't see all those. I yet I see one. I see like the, the one in the upper left-hand corner. That's all I see. So how do I get... Because I could have figured that part out if those had all showed up there. How do I get them to show there? Oh, man. Um, well, it looks like... <laughs> There's probably some correlation here since I've got 22 different results. I might have. Yeah, because uh, clearly just... module Ryan's whatever, that's clearly not something that came came with it. Yeah. This might be a, a perk of having a really old account. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would want to say that, you know, because uh, what I so saw can here. I ask, can I ask a quick question? Um, so. Does this that we're looking at right here, where it says select a template, is there something that we have to do to turn a page into a template or does it just kind of automatically show all of your pages that you've ever created right here? My assumption right here is that these template pages are um, actually uh, course specific template pages. Um, okay. And so, because every single one of these has has courses in the title, and I know I didn't write all these titles because I would have been a little more uh, <laughs> intentional about it. So I'm going to venture over to the pages portion, and I'm going to look at my theme pages, and I'm going to search for courses on here. Okay, so if you see the one there, example courses lesson template, okay? I <clears throat> was in the editor, and I went in, and I completely rebuilt that one not thinking that what I was doing was rebuilding my default template. But so I did that, but then I came in here then later and I cloned it and I gave it a new name. And mm -hmm. there, then at that point where it ended up was in the standalone pages. So maybe if I was able to move right. it back into the, the themes, maybe it would show up. But again, I'm only seeing one theme when I go into the lessons. Yeah. That's, I don't know that I have a pretty answer for that right now. It's probably something that I would need to go and like really, really grind against and figure out like where, when, why, and how are these pages? Like how can I actually get something to overwrite on a theme? Um, okay. Well, we have the, well, and have the ability to clone it. So if mm -hmm. I could just clone it, have it be here and then show up on the other page. But I mean, it could, it could be my account or it could be, I mean, you got it to work. You got it working in yours, so it's got to be a feature. So maybe it's just my account. Yeah, but I mean, I have, I've got to have tons and tons of themes in here, and all these copies and clones and clones and copies of course templates that are all being populated inside of there. Okay, wait a um, second. Oh, wait, hang on a second here. So you're you're seeing this under themes. Um do you then associate that theme? Cause I didn't click here. I clicked on pages and then themes. Mm -hmm. So and what, what I'm referencing right here is that like, take this first theme funnel performance and the second one, general funnel hub and physical products. Each one of these themes has a uh, courses section template, right? And so all of these courses section templates are showing up on that, um, on that pop-up for my, advanced settings here. Okay. So I got to go into the themes and build out a theme with a course page, course lesson page. To create your own. Is that what you're saying, Dan? Yeah. I can see that as being a workaround. Of course, it's not pretty. It's not nice. I, um, I just want to be able to create a couple of templates so I can <clears throat> start doing something. One of the things that we kind of, uh, as we were building out the courses hierarchy and everything, we <clears throat> we used to have like module pages as being like very customizable and to be able to do exactly what you're asking right now <clears throat> and do like make a clone of the current theme page, but then like deviate from it in some form or fashion. Um, and then assign that module, that new module template to the module, um, but it it blew up very very fast. I mean, people were wanting to like 
customized. And then we had like hundreds of rows. I mean, our marketing department, like they went nuts with it. And uh, mm -hmm. it became a very confusing and not very organized uh, kind of functionality. So we actually scrapped away from it. Well, question, because um, I know right now, like even if we go back to the basics of themes, so right now it presents as though we have to pick a current theme. I only have four that are options. So then in, if we were wanted to make our own theme, we would have to pick one of these and then basically completely redo every page in the theme and then rename it, whatever we want to rename it. Is that right? Or uh, duplicate. You can also duplicate and deviate from there. Got it. Okay. So, but we would, but we would go in and make our own, it's like delete everything out and then re-add our own stuff. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then it, it sounds like in order to leverage or in order to use templates, like you showed us, Jimmy, in the advanced, we have to have those templates available. It, it has to live inside of a theme. It has to be connected to a theme. Uh, that that's that's my assumption right now, ba just based off of what I was seeing, because all of them had very similar titles. They all had course sec courses section in the name. Okay. And, and so that's that's my assumption right now, without having tapped anyone on the shoulder to look at the underlying code or having spoken with anyone on the courses team. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, just a just a really quick address of um, somebody was asking about the um, basically it's a show hide function. Um, I think that the same show hide function is, is available in the editor and we could probably do a quick live or something about it just to address that question. Um, I'm not following. Is it this comment oh, that's in the... About the 49 lessons with transcripts? Here. Yeah. Here's mm -hmm. this comment. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Mm. It's just okay. a show hide feature that we would typically have, right? On um, in similar to 1.0. Is that how you guys would do it? Um, we will base off over every lesson. So, I mean, every lesson will have its own unique dynamic content area, and so if you're essentially copying that transcript, and is it is it custom code or is it an element? Like it, it says, it's like a accordion open up and close it yeah so that's probably custom code so if you save uh save your custom code as uh like a saved section and then for every lesson that you create you'll go and apply the saved section don't do a universal section because then it'll be you'll basically be like for every n plus one uh transcript that you're pasting in you're overriding the previous one yeah so save section, you know, for transcript mod or, you know, podcast section one, dump that in there, copy it over, put the new transcript on the next lesson and it should go pretty fast for you. Yeah. And we, um, yesterday we covered that in the workshop. It was a little bit later. We should figure out how to like timestamp it, but yeah, we covered exactly how to do what Jimmy just said in the save section and bring it in to the next yeah. one. Yeah, I can't see that commenter in our live over here, but we'll we'll get you what we did yesterday because I think yeah. that's what you need to do. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Um, all right. So just to wrap up the topic that we were just talking about, I want to share my screen because we originally started out defining like, okay, what is sections and what is modules? Mm -hmm. And I just, this is what spawned our question here on my screen. Um, so this is a course home, I believe, and we have course title, and then we were seeing section title, and what we are now understanding is this is actually modules. This is why we were like, are sections the same as modules? Not in relation to sections on like the page, like the green sections mm -hmm. that you're adding onto a page. Um, so that was just what kind of spawned that Can question. Can I help um, clear some confusion on that really fast? Yes. yes. That has <laughs> been um, a confusion point since very, very early on okay. because of the way that the database tables were written. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> just, I figured it was because that's just the way that the code has to be written, but we're like officially calling them modules. <laughs> my my headache is that I, I don't believe that it had to be written that way. It's just that it was, and we already like, we would have had to like clear a bunch of stuff out and delete stuff that was already published. And sure. so- <laughs> sections in the code 
are really modules to a user. Yes. Cool. Okay. Cool. Okay. okay. But and all right, my assumption the, coming the user into the conversation. Are in the editor. What's that? <laughs> I, I was gonna say this this uh was my assumption, but I didn't want to assume that you guys were like looking at this. I wanted to make sure I understood yeah. what you guys were like trying to yeah. figure out. But that yeah. that's that's well that's known. It. That's what spun us into well that oh, one right. and then when Pod was talking about modules and the dynamic modules, I think the combination of those two things, we were like, whoa, wait a second. So but I think you've clarified it in terms of mm -hmm. that sections are modules, except for when you're in the editor, sections are sections. <laughs> <laughs> if the section's got green on it, it's a editor right. section. <laughs> <laughs> editor section, yeah. So that was so just so that last page you had up there on the screen, that was a course section. So when somebody, that was the home page, that was the home page, yeah. That was yeah, sorry, Dan. Go ahead. Page of the course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go back to it. All right. So it said course template on it. So when somebody comes in, they're going to come in through the customer center. They're going to click on an image that will then take them to this page here because this is the course homepage. And then from here, you're going to have your individual modules on there. And then they click on a module and it opens up the module. Um, now, does this course page have to be used or can you send them somewhere different from the customer center? I think this goes hand in hand with the deep linking question. Mm, okay. How? Does this <laughs> course home template have to be used? If you so oh. if you are on the customer center uh, show view and you link in like course link the that course link element that's like dynamically populated it usually says go to and then like double curly bracket that's gonna take you to oh. the course home okay so now, if you just put a, a link in there and hyperlink it to wherever you want it to go, it'll go wherever you want it to go. Okay. So if you're using the standard click funnel stuff, you put in your image that is associated with the course that will then auto populate right into the, um, into the customer center page. And then it will also have a link that you would have associated with it, which would then automatically take them to that course homepage. But if we modify it and put in just an image, without the link then we can have that link the, the action on the image go to any page we want yeah it could go to like google.com if you link it there i i usually like to send most of my traffic to google yes <laughs> <laughs> they appreciate think, it <laughs> and i think jimmy just to give you the like and dan i don't want to speak for you but to give you the if i'm reading your mind because i know the genius you do in membership areas i think jimmy one of our you know um Concerns isn't the right right word, but one of the things is that you've given us so much power to like link, 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 right? In terms of the mm -hmm. hierarchy. And we yeah. can very much see the use case where we're trying to simplify and we don't want a user to have to traverse three levels of navigation. You know what I mean? And so I think the root of the question is just can we skip some of those parent levels to, you know, really get them right into the place that they need to be. And so I yeah. think- yeah. I could see something really useful being like, hey, welcome back, so and so. And, and like, uh, like as far as merge tags go, like, first name is like something that you can currently populate in there, like, welcome back, Jane. Exactly. Pick up where you left off. Exactly. Here, right. Exactly. And then it takes them right to their progress mm -hmm. track stuff. You so got it. Yeah. That. Exactly but that was always one of the things that yeah. bug, bugged me about Kajabi was you always had to go through like three or four pages just to finally get to the content. Right. And yep. so that was tough. But the answer, <laughs> A deeper question that Andrea has where she asked a question about deep linking um, there you got if you're going to send somebody to a lesson that they have access to you can just give them the link to that lesson page and they can just go straight there you yeah. can send it to them in an email or something right yeah as mm -hmm. long as they're logged in is what we have discovered Okay. That's what oh, we were still, testing yesterday. Yeah, they still have. If the they're not logged in, it puts them into the customer center page. If they are logged in, it will take them to where the link is. But when they went to the customer so, center page and they logged in, did that then still take them directly to the lesson? So it took them to the. It took them to the. It takes them to log in, and then once they've logged in, it puts them onto the customer center page. Okay. And I think we have so, that as a feature request now, right? 
So, it yeah. is vlogged. Yeah. It's it's vlogged. So vote up. Vote up it. Fun. <laughs> We're going to have to do like voting up on the black market or something, you know? Oh my God. <laughs> You'll start blowing up my feature request board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, let's yeah. see. Okay. So should we move on to the next question? Are we all satisfied yeah, with that's good. I think that? we're good. Yeah. Um, my next one, I think we kind of got it answered, but I don't know. I wanted to check if we're all confident in understanding this. So I will share. Number two is what's the point of the module page? <laughs> and I think that we probably discovered more about that as we kept working. Like there's, there's the opportunity to use those pages, but we don't necessarily have to, yeah. if we want to link it by like bypass it by linking it differently. Um, I think hand in hand with that though, I don't know, Andrea, do you have up ready for like the, either the module <coughs> page or the lesson page that we were, were working on yesterday? Um, the, I'm noticing a lack of, what is it called, Dan? The navigation that goes on the left sidebar, 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 yeah. um, there's the lack of having a, like a sidebar on any of the templates. So I guess I kind of want to define what would be a proper way of setting that up because we were starting to, to do that yesterday. And I don't know that we got very far with it um, because I think when, when we're looking at, let me show um, and maybe Andrea, you have us up faster than I do, but here's like my, here's our customer center. And then let's say we click on to enter a course based on how we're all used to this functioning. And even with like officials, official click funnels programs like two CCX or the funnel builders program, once you click to enter into a course, you're landing on a page that already has the sidebar navigation on it. It's not a page that looks like this module page, which is where it takes you when you click on a course, right? Am I understanding that right? Did we figure out like once you click on a course, it's actually taking us to this module page? That shouldn't be correct. If you clicked into a link for a course from a customer center, it should take you to the course home. The course home I'm has sorry. a collection of modules. And those yeah, modules so once... have collections of nested modules or nested okay. lessons. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I skipped the course home page. So you're right. It's landing us here. And then these are the modules. And so then once you click on the module, it takes you to that module page. So now we're like three pages in and I'm still not to a lesson. So that's why we were talking about bypassing that. But um, at what point does it make sense to have a sidebar navigation on? Like none of the templates have that on there. And I think that that's potentially a problem for people that are getting started and they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I can explain that really simply. Okay. Um, I built a lot of the themes and right now the sidebar navigation is technically classified as a beta element. It's still, we're still like hammering through it a good bit. So you can actually look at it right now. Uh, it won't yeah. look pretty or anything because it's just gonna be in the middle of your page, but um, just at, go up back up to the top. Or, or add it down there. That works too. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to, because we kind of were doing it yesterday. But now this this sidebar element that you're talking about here, this is not even, this isn't even close to the same as what is actually in the 2CCX program though. Um, my my spidey senses are telling me they might have custom coded something. Uh, yeah. They, they it's, it's all, <laughs> it's, it's right down to the HTML they coded. Yeah. And that's which which makes sense if it's not ready yet. You guys are still actually trying to develop this sidebar thing. So yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not complaining it. about it. I'm just saying that yeah, it's it is it is hard coded. Well, and it's also a really good way. I mean, just so the folks that are maybe listening that aren't um, in the, I think a lot of times people don't totally understand like the SaaS process. And so I also just want to say like yes, even though it is hard coded, and that is not something that is like scalable or deployable it's also a really good way to get like user feedback you know on a potential hey should we invest in dev to do this you know and so anyway just want to say like I, I think it's okay that it's hard-coded especially because i mean you guys are probably getting a ton of great data on the use of that sidebar for should we put it in or not but yeah okay 
Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. There's a few, there's there's a few things that have been uh, had some special touches. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it it took me uh, three hours yesterday to duplicate one of those special touches. So yeah, <laughs> that's true. All the code is technically there, but I, I don't know. I didn't dig far enough. To oh, see I, where the I didn't look at your code. I, just, I didn't look at your code. I just built it. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. So, so this would be oh, I'm like what I'm doing right now would be what one would want to do. I don't know if I'm on the right page that we would do this on. So I actually is, have uh, um, a helpful home. suggestion. Okay. Yeah. Um, basically, so like you have in in these in these templates, there's always a uh, there's a nav, like a, a universal nav, and then there's always a universal footer, and then for your body content that sits in between those two. Um, if you sat, Ooh, I'm wondering how this is actually possible. Um, because there's universal sections and I guess you would want that nav to be part of the universal section, but yeah. mm, it doesn't have to be. Never mind. All right. I, <laughs> I, I redact my, my suggestion. <laughs> Well, we're because that's a great point, right? Of like, okay, if I'm going to start building out a course and I'm putting, I'm going to need this navigation to be on maybe a few of my template pages. And so I'm either going to need to probably just save this row or save a section as a template and then go insert it onto all of my other template pages as a unit as a universal section, right? Is that yeah, where we're going like, with that? Like, so, so if you notice the, the liquid text syntax that we have right there, there's like course title uh i it's kind of small for me but it's essentially course dot thing course dot thing yeah. all of that's going to get dynamically rendered based off of the actual contents that you've populated inside of your oh. course so okay. that's why kind of why I, I took my comment back it's okay. like well it's okay. just going to dynamically populate across any of these pages so okay you, so you, you just need to drop the element in just drop the element in yeah oh yeah okay. so it would that would actually be so it's universal okay. without being universal yeah. Look at that. They thought of do everything. We, do we still have like active member nav kind of concept or is that still would be a CSS thing to That's highlight the active member nav? So the lesson that they're in that's active does, is there, um, does it signify oh, wait, what it is so that we could change yeah, the CSS there's, on it? There's colors down here, Andrea. Okay, no active, active color. color. Perfect. Yay. Good job. Okay. okay. I Sorry. You said active active member nav and I... That's 1.0. Sorry. That's, yeah, the, okay. that's the CSS class in 1.0 navigation elements. Gotcha. That's okay. where we got that from. We have... we. Uh, I was playing around with like dynamic content rendering and stuff like that. So there, I have one thing that's like if... Uh, if users like actively signed in, then display active sign in email or something like that down at the bottom of the page. Like you're actively signed in as so and so at hotmail.com. Um, and that's what I thought you were talking about. And I was like, oh, oh no, I, <laughs> I know we were going there today. <laughs> so, no, that, that's a whole other day. Is it that that's not really working yet? That stuff, the dynamic stuff, it is working. It's working. Okay. You just have to know what you're going to type and we haven't surfaced all of the like the whole repertoire of referenceable liquid syntax items okay but it's coming it's not ready it's for pretty... prime time yet so we won't even talk about it okay that'll be a different day cool. all right <laughs> all right let's see we go here go away there okay so I think, uh, all right, our next one was relationship between the customer center, workspaces, domain, and URL. I don't really remember what our content uh, Can you pull up your screen just one? a little bit? Sorry. So oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. Here we go. Um, what were we, we were working oh, on? I think we, yes, I know exactly what this is. If you want to, I can share my screen. Yes. Okay. So one of the questions and i'm sure this is going to take us down another rabbit hole which is just so fun okay so one of the questions that we have when we were trying to understand the architecture of it is that we know the customer center login page 
is we thought was tied to one workspace. But, you know, there is the teachable model where like if I buy something from Jimmy and from Susan and from Dan, I have like one teachable log and I go into teachable and I can see all of my universities right there. So mm -hmm. we weren't sure. And this might be too future and you might not be able to, to comment to it. But we weren't sure if the ClickFunnels strategy was one more of teachable or if it was one of, OK, no, it's just going to be a customer center that's within and it, it's controlled by the domain level. So there's only one customer center per domain. And then I would log in and see that. Huh. OK. Um, <laughs> so Kajabi's mobile app kind of behaves that way as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think I think we're entertaining something like that as a build coming down the pipeline. Um, but right now, the reality is that for every customer center login, it's hosted at a specific um, domain. So domain okay. forward slash customer dash center. Um, and that is specific to your workspace. Okay. And okay. right now we can only have one domain per workspace. Is that, uh, is that the case? Sorry, if that's a, if that's a planned thing. Um, no, 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 you're right. You're right. So it's, it's like, uh, because there's no way to select a specific domain just on the customer center level. So yeah, so the customer center is inheriting what the site's domain is. Yeah, you can that's go ahead and add in a bunch of site or sorry, a bunch of custom domains. Um, but yeah, you're you're right in that assumption. Yeah. Okay. And I guess if we wanted to get really crazy with the tease was we can maybe use the URL redirect tool to if we had multiple domains that we wanted to feed into one customer center. So like one of the ideas that we had is like, you know, if we think of like Brendan Bouchard with growth day, right, where there's like mm -hmm. Jenna, you know, Jenna Kucher stuff, and there's like Mel Robin stuff. And there's, you know, all these different people if we were to have like a conglomerate, you know, customer center that all of us could feed into. Is the purpose to track who's sending the most people into your training? Um, I didn't even think about that, but that'd be amazing. I, we, I think it was more just a, you know, um, how shared could the customer center be was part, one of the questions. Hmm. Okay. It's a, I mean, it's a cool idea. I, I think that, I mean, so this is always, this is always a struggle, right? So everyone here is a wizard and not 100% of the ClickFunnels population are all comprised of wizards. I so think you're being tough. generous. I think the majority of the population will not be wizards if we know anything about product adoption. So I think you were correct. <laughs> yeah, so so doing doing wizardry like that is is always really tough because it's like, oh, we, like, we want to do this. We want to do this hyper-specific thing because it's going to you know, help our specific use case. And it's like, ah, but the 99 over here, like they're... They just need to plug their information in and get somebody to sign up and pay them. You right. Know? Yeah. So, it, yeah, it could technically go that way. I think we'd have to do a little bit of uh, work on our end to make that happen. But yeah. I don't think that that's necessarily the case yet about like domain sharing. Of course, the redirects are always there. Like, you go to joeschmo.com forward slash Andrea's course yeah. and, you know, redirect them over to your course. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I think, um, I think that maybe probably all of us would agree, but my hope is that ClickFunnels does continue to to make the decisions based on the mass adoption and not on the wizards. Because <laughs> the wizards will figure it out. We're with you. So I'm more for like, let's grow the platform and get more people on it. It's, it's funny because like, all of us wizards, you know? ClickFunnels, like in the marketing department, like we are our own wizards. Like we just talked about how, oh, there's like a really cool cust uh, customer center nav or, or course nav. Like how come like everyone else doesn't have something like that? Well, it's like, well, they went in and jankified it. And, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if we shared that with everybody, now everyone now needs to understand HTML and JavaScript. And right. that's just not the case for everybody. So I totally, yeah, yeah I get it. Um, yeah. Well, I was going to say the course night, is still needed. <laughs> the, uh, the, oh, yeah, it definitely is still needed. But um, what I was going to say is the nice thing about ClickFunnels, and you guys even enhance this with ClickFunnels too, is the ability to be able to do the custom code in there. Yeah, and I really, so nice. I really appreciate the way you guys put in the way you did the attributes now and having the page name uh, be, or let me think here, the element name in the layout list being actually so nice. different than the attributes that you can put in there. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the only the only problem I have with it is I really kind of wish they were like in the same place. 
Um, it would be really nice if you're adding those attributes because you're adding the attribute to the element. It'd be really nice mm-hmm. if you added the attribute in that little right sidebar where you're doing the CSS and the H- and the uh, JavaScript. Uh, would it be nice if you've added one attribute and, and then there's like a tiny list of recent attributes created associated with elements on that page? And that way it's like, okay, let's say you've got a bunch of images that you want styled a certain way. Maybe they all need to be at like a, with a heart carved out or something like that. And then you run a custom, a custom beta attribute. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's how I build. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a guy. Valentine's Day special, right? So, <laughs> hurts when, hurts. when you write a custom data, you write a uh, treat a custom data attribute almost like a class, right? right. And then right. it's like that clip path, and then you can take that custom data attribute and apply it to many image elements. Yeah, I mean, if that was down there, you could just copy it, but it, you know, the other thing for me is, I mean, just to go off on a tangent here just for a second, is that the CSS box at the bottom, it'd be really nice if you could resize that thing. Like, just grab a hold of it and pull it taller. Because <laughs> it's this tall. You get, like, four lines of code in it. I know you can click the one button and it goes full screen, but I, I, I don't know. For me, I just want to resize it. There you go, Dan. Just I know. I, yeah, but now I can't see my page. So now I can't see my page. So if I'm putting in some CSS, the CSS kicks in automatically if I could see it, I could see where something changes on the page as I'm typing it in. If I got it full screen, then I got to close the screen, look at it, open the screen back up again. So, I mean, that's just life must be really hard for Dan Havy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should see you should see the uh, you should see the widget I built for 1.0 that I use to change the size of all of the CSS and the uh, custom. <laughs> Custom, uh, whatever that the tracking code. So you're just gonna have to do that for 2.02. <laughs> well, yeah. Trust me, I'm already working on it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Yeah, I'm working. All right. I'm working on popping that loose so you can move it anywhere you want on the page. <laughs> you know, I, 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 jokes aside, I, I, I do take notes of when um, people who are editor wizards, you know, I know, and I know a handful of them, people who want it to be like a fully fledged design tool. Um, like I, I want it to go that way too, because I love funnel design. I, I love spending time in the editor. Um, but I also have this philosophy that the longer you spend in the editor, the less, sorry, if you spend all your time in the editor, you spend no time making money. Yeah. Unless, unless your job is Good to point. build, build those bikes that require the editor. <laughs> there you go. Right. <laughs> that is true. Which is all of us here. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So let's move on to this one. Um, will we will we be able to edit the login access page in the future? And we are talking about this page here. I know exactly which page you're talking about. And yeah. Okay. the issue Thank right you. now, and I'll just I'll just say it like it, it, it's uh, coming down the pipeline. Um, and we know that it needs to get out sooner than later. But this is a safe, stable place for us to <clears throat> have customers launch customer centers and courses. Um, but coming down the pipeline is the uh, customer center sign-on element, right? So mm-hmm. everything that's inside of that white column doesn't yeah. exist as an element yet. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. all. This is all like app code, and um, soon you will have that capability. In which case, then we need to provide a customer center like sign-on page, and you can do all kinds of wizardry and magic that you would like to do. Um, after that point, but that element's got to get built and then build a page that hosts it, like in the theme, and then we're, we'll be off to the races. So basically, it's, it's basically going to be an access page, like in 1.0. Yes. Okay. But I think that they have way better user experience just out of the box features here than 1.0 right now. Cause no more like, so Dan created some code for us. So we don't ever have to worry about the crazy secret login versus regular login. It's like one login. So, which was fantastic for all of the, it reduced our help tickets by 99% on login issues. Okay. Um, so that was huge. But the new um, trend that I'm seeing <clears throat> with my clients is that they want a no password option so that they could just use it as a lead gen strategy and access to training. I'm curious if you guys have been chatting about that or if that would fall into the wizardry realm. Could I... No password. I mean, is that essentially just the the magic sign in link? Um, I guess it Afterwards. could be. Yeah, I guess it could be the magic link. 
Well, yeah, the way that we were thinking about 1.0 is basically like hiding the password element and just auto populating it with a generic password. You know what I mean? For when people get in, but I think that so just thinking this end to end, uh, there will have to be some kind of optionality where um, someone can become a let's let's for terminology sake, a member of a customer center. Mm -hmm. They'll need to be able to create an account and mm -hmm. or use of magic signing link for the first time, in which case their contact profile is created. They're also a member of the customer center. Um, but then they will also need to be able to access uh, content that they're not actively enrolled in. Right. And I think surfacing that like kind of functionality probably needs to be brought up or shown like how, show people an example of what it looks like to, to give them free content or freemium content or, you know, paid exclusive content, et cetera. Yeah. I think that's one of our list of questions of the, um, we have, you know, the four different scenarios where it's like, like completely don't show only show under a condition show with an upsell route. Um, uh, and then there was one other one, uh, show after, which is kind of a show with condition, but. Hmm. I think that, I think that, and are you talking, so there's, mm -hmm. and of course there's levels here, right? So like. Mm -hmm show module two after module one's been completed, show module eight after they purchase product B. Right. Um, and maybe it's like the gold tier and they've only been, you know, how they've only bought into silver tier so far. Um, I think that can all be done under the settings config for each of those. We saw, we saw the under modules, we did see like only show after this lesson and only show on this date and show drip. So we found those. I was more thinking on the customer center page where like right now, you know, we can control show, don't show or show with lock on the three combinations of tags, products and Wasabi OTO. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we were just trying to figure out like on the customer center, is there a way, you know, like how would we control like show, don't show, show with lock? Great question. <laughs> you guys want to go there and, and click around? You want to figure it out? Yeah, yeah, Andrea, we, you should pull that up. Okay, I'll share my screen. We we're not sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, now, while you're uh, while you're pulling that out, so um, Jimmy, you said there that you could move them on to the next lesson after they had completed the existing one. Is that is the trigger for that? Just them clicking the button that says, "Hey, I've completed this." So yeah, right now it's the mark is complete button. Just yeah. that's it. Boom. Okay, so there's nothing to do with videos. Nothing to do with having completed something. Mm -hmm. Done an since we're hosting the videos, quiz. Sorry, since what? we're hosting the videos with Voomly now, um, there will be coming very soon um, the functionality of like they need to watch at least eighty percent of my video or, okay. or something like that, um, and then they can go on to the next lesson. But that's not one hundred percent yet. So now, if you're incorporating Voomly into there, are you also incorporating then the video funnel functionality from Voomly? where you can put in like buttons and stuff and then branch them off into other uh, videos. More wizardry. Do you have a, I'm going to go, I'm going to, that's all built in the Voomly right now. Yes. Um, the short answer is no. <laughs> you, you opened up. I might leave it at here. the, I might leave it at the short answer because I mean, there's a whole conversation about technology stacks and routing and uh, i mean the short answer is no <laughs> okay but but you can't That's outside just, of the scope just, of the just let Dan everybody know well. just let everybody know for voomly though you can create that functionality in your voomly mm -hmm. account grab a hold of the the embed code and just drop it into a custom javascript html box and it works great i've tested it Cool. cool. That's awesome. And if you guys don't know what Boom um, is, go look it up because it's really super cool. And I wish I had an affiliate link. Yes. <laughs> I did get a question yesterday, though, from a client about like, hey, can we load videos in 2.0? Like, can I get rid of my Vimeo? And so I, I did feel safe in saying, yes, you can load your videos. Um, we're still working through like, is the overall experience of the membership experience there? But like the mm -hmm. loading of the videos is solid. We did it yesterday. It rendered. It was great. So yeah, you guys, did you guys see uh, Todd pushed like a two hour hot fix on 
uh, being able to like, as you're building out the course content before it was like, you had to select a video from a dropdown. You would have previously needed to go to like my settings, my files, videos, add a video. Now you can just drag and drop the video as you're building the content. That's awesome. I did not see that. The, the yeah. actual video itself. So you pull in the video element and then you can open it up and grab the video right there. Yeah. I know that the right in the, the screen's not in front of us right now, but if you can imagine just like those, it's like you expand to drag and drop in like the feature image or the, you know, lesson image or whatever it is. Um, and then you expand to add audio and for both the audio and video, I'm pretty sure I know for sure video it's, I'm not sure hundred percent on audio, but I'm pretty sure he went top to bottom on there. It was like, they need to be able to just drag and drop their stuff in, in here. Like they don't like, need to go back to settings and my files to go grab all their stuff, dump it in there, upload it, and then go re back and reference it. It needs to just like drag and drop. So, so Andrea, can awesome. you pull up your screen and see if you can show that or were you going to show something else? I was trying to, it's loading right now. Me. Your fast internet. With my amazing old computer. <laughs> um, that's it. I'm going to start a fund for like, get Andrew a new computer because we're oh, good wow. with her speed. <laughs> tip, tip jar for your computer. That's right. <laughs> okay. So this was Jimmy to what you were saying. This is one of those save sections that we brought in yesterday. So this is a typical build, like what we would do in 1.0. So mm -hmm. it, it, that was, it worked pretty well um, yesterday. Oh, the only thing, this is on our list of questions. Actually, now that we're here, uh, maybe I should just ask it super quick. And that is, it seems like this lesson content box inherits padding. Like it, it inherits padding somewhere. We don't know where. Because like when we were making this section, we had it perfectly lined up with this section up here. But when we brought it into the lesson content area, this lesson content area seems like it has some kind of padding or something. We weren't sure mm -hmm. where. Because then now it gets all messed up like with the on the sides. Okay. Um. <laughs> You said it was Just side padding. It was it side padding or top padding? Side oh padding. yeah, I was gonna say. Look at the open the open the uh, sidebar. So, it's side padding. Well, you got oh, um, I know. I think I know what it is. Uh, go to the. It's a single row. Uh, so okay. it's it. So we built we built the section on this page, like as the template page. Like we went to edit the template uh -huh. and built the section and we made everything line up to the width of that video that's up above, mm -hmm. but then saving that section as a template and then dropping it into the content. So that's like the dynamic content box that it's in right now. Uh -huh. It added that padding and there isn't a way that there appears. It's in the column. Way. It's 16 pixels of column margin left and right. Well, you're talking all the white space on either side of that, aren't you, Susan? So that's much more than six yeah, pixels. That's, yeah, I that's... think it has something to do with the dynamic lesson content box. Right. And I don't see that dynamic lesson content box. I mean, unless we can see. Oh, well, you'd probably have to go to um, the element. I mean, sorry, the template page for that, right? Can, can, do you mind humoring me really fast and yeah. clicking on a, any of the columns that are inside of that section? Um, inside of this section here? Yep. Okay, sure. Uh, okay. Oh, it's all zeroed out? Yeah. Crap, I thought I was going to be super smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might have to be something that we record well, what we did and there, then submit it. Andrew, yeah. actually, as you notice there, when you pull, pull that margin back over to the right again, you're going to see where it's doing it from. So that's clearly, there is clearly something, some margin or whatever on the on yeah. on the sides. Now, obviously, um, once you guys have this going, just we'll open it up, we'll inspect it, we'll find out where it is, we'll use some CSS, we'll get it out. But that's 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 a, oh, there that's we go. A fix that's that that's there. a fix. It's not a oh, what was what'd you do? Oh, it was the width. Uh, oh, the, the width. They have hundred. It auto inherited a width of the row. Yeah, I get to be the smart one for a second. No, well, there we go. No CSS. Eighty percent. Yep, it's the width that was inherited. It must have inherited, even though it was a hundred percent when we built it. When it came in in that area, you're you're in, the, you're in the element. Uh, you went on the element and not the row. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Awesome. Well, we figured that out. Yay. Thanks, right. Jimmy. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to yeah. uh, oh, Jimmy. Um, I was sniffing in the right area. You're here. Bro. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> right. So now, right. And, and again, uh, Jimmy, I'll give you guys some props again for the layout at the top. Because as you saw there, Andrea's having all kinds of trouble trying to get into that row. With the layout, mm -hmm. the way you guys have it at the top, basically following the dom tree <clears throat> down, it's just, it's so much easier just to go in there. Oh, uh, there's an even faster way too. So uh, click on an element, click on like action two headline. Okay. Oh um, yeah, you, the, there's breadcrumbs. Well, go through the breadcrumbs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can go through the breadcrumbs too. Like yeah. that, up here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, especially cool. with the columns. The columns are hard to grab a hold of sometimes, and yeah. So, yeah, and uh, yeah I've been using those. I've been using those breadcrumbs all the time already. That that's slick too. And the other thing that I like is how you can, in, when you're in the layout, you can grab a hold of like a row or something, and you can actually take it back into the page, and then just go down the page and drop it where you want it inside the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys cool. built that on purpose, but it ended up that way. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I will have to peel off. So do you want to start driving, Susan? Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Is that, I don't have access into that workspace of yours, right? I'll just start working out of our geek out one. Um, yeah, sorry. You should have access. I can add you as a, what we found out yesterday as a collaborator, right? <laughs> Is that what we figured out? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Cool. Okay. Hey, Jimmy, thank you so much for your time today. It was so nice just being able to crawl inside your brain. Really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. All okay, right. guys. So, see you later. Andrea. Happy kicking out. Uh, bye, Andrea. Okay. So, Susan, okay. when you get in there, I still want to see this, this video thing that Jimmy was talking about because I'm a little bit unclear on it. But, okay. So, that would be fun. Um, and then we can go from there. One second, because I also had a question that I think pertains to something we were talking about before with enrollments. Um, and I was distracted setting up my email so I can get into the workflow so I can show. So may, hope, I don't think this got answered yet. Um, uh, okay, I'm creating my workflow. So is there a way to you were talking about like giving someone like some trial access like give them a little bit of a taste of um a course like give them maybe seven days access and then take it away do you know off do you know how that that would get accomplished and i i have a suspicion that it might be with the workflows but i'm gonna see what your thoughts are on that if you have any and if you don't know that's okay we can maybe explore Ooh. it together <laughs> tagging that's a cool idea. I so would say, show... yeah, probably based on tag, add, remove tag after seven days in a workflow would. So I haven't explored this enough to know yet. Do we have that ability right now? Um, let me see event type. I don't know. Let's go with opt-in. I'm not sure. I was I was on a call earlier for the Great funnel builders success. program and Jason Economides and he told me to say hi to you, Jimmy. He, he oh said, yeah. <laughs> he says something like, "Yeah, I haven't quite gotten a chance to look at the. I think it was the funnel flow something part of it or whatever." And I we all started laughing. I go, "Yeah, the, because there's 200 other things ahead of it that you had to look at and figure out first, because you know this thing's a beast. I mean, it really is. It's going to be fantastic." Uh, when it's all up and running and we figured out how to use it. But, um, and, and I see why it took two, okay. two, three years to even build what you have so far, because this is just, yeah. it's just massive. Okay. So I do see we can do tags, add and remove tags. So you'd put a tag. There's um, also, say, like, um, there's a workflow step for enroll in course. So I was going to say, yeah. yeah. So I think that would be the other way. I mean, can you remove enrollment though? That's a great question. Let's check the settings. So we want to do enroll. So it doesn't look, yeah, it doesn't look like no. there's an remove enrollment, but that might be something to request. But it looks like yeah. it could be done with tags. We're able to use tags on the like for enrollment, right? Like if they have, if they get this tag, then give them access that, that I have not looked into yet. So there should be on like a, let's go look module or lesson create basis that like they need to have a specific tag or product. 
in order to access the thing. Let's see. I didn't. So you said on the module level? Hmm. Uh, do I go here? Yeah, I don't remember seeing that. Nope, not um, there. It's supposed to be there. Because um, I thought you set that up at the product level. I thought I saw it in there. Yeah, product grants access oh. to course. Let's try there. Here's my best burger course. Um, I saw I saw some videos of you building that out. I was like, this is just <laughs> that's just comical. So I was joking about chainsaws ah, earlier, comical. and I was like, I legitimately had a chainsaws for dummies demo course that we built up. Yeah, when it first became functional. Tags. Oh no, that's not that's grouping and organizing. Where did you say you found it, Dan? Uh, I I've only been in the product thing one time. Oh, okay. I thought you just said like, "Ha, I found it." <laughs> That's no, I was said. I was laughing at Jimmy. Um, that your course was hilarious. <laughs> my brain. I, I well, want to build. I make really good purchase? burgers. I think I want to make that course. What about Russell purchase? Russell started with the potato gun course. So I can do a burger course. <laughs> um, open up the purchase actions. Digital asset well, access. Not that one. We want to do course access. So if somebody buys this, they get access to that course. Is you that can what, choose. That's not what we were trying to figure out, was it? Well, I'm. So we're. Oh, trying are to those the modules? How would you oh. give it are these the actual the modules here then? Yeah. So those are the modules. So okay. you could hypothetically um, <clears throat> have demo course one selected and then deselect the you know the first two modules, and then if they want access to the marketing one then they need to buy the product. Right. Yeah. So that's one scenario, right? Like you set up a product that is specific to just giving them access to the first module, and then you could probably set it for free. Um, but then how would you, the question still remains like, what if you wanted to take away access? And that looks like you'd have to do it through tags, but I'm not sure if we can do it through tags because it doesn't look like we can give access based on tags at this point. So I mean, that's a future thing. Yeah, I'm um, I'm running yeah. through this stuff, triple checking, trying to see where um, we would need to products products this course is included in. So that associates um, products that are referenced, and then to do edit content for this lesson publishing content URLs. so so my it's question gone. it used to be here i swear okay. <laughs> well just like so the, just the color picker <laughs> used to show the colors from the style guide too but that's gone too <laughs> uh yeah. it's on its way back yeah i i hope so that's that's definitely <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's on its way back that that one was um there's a ton of confusion around the style guide stuff. Uh, and so we're bringing a little more constraints around the uh, the palette and stuff like that. Love it. That was one of my suggestions in one of our videos at some point. <laughs> um, okay, so we may or may not be able to do that in the future, but I will, I'm going to see if I can submit it as so a So my question is now- Being able to add and, rem add and remove access based on tag or the enrollment workflow. If there could be a, like a remove, like unenroll, um, trigger on the workflow or not trigger, but step action. Um, anyway, okay, go ahead, Dan. But my question was going to be, so we, in, when we did the purchase, we said, okay, they get access to module one of this lesson. They don't act, get access to the other two. When they're in that actual course, then will they see something in there? We that, I mean, like the Wasabi OTO, uh, <clears throat> from 1.0, is there going to be something in there where they can see, those two modules and click on them and go buy them. Yes, that's that's what I'm confused about because it was definitely it's oh that's what you in there. Admin. I bet you it's feature gated and not accessible at the moment and probably needs to be turned turned on. Okay, yeah. Again, we're we we are definitely you guys uh, biggest supporters. So and we understand uh, where we are and so we're. We're trying to do everything to learn and at the same time send, send in as many bug reports as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm usually three or four a day when I'm in the editor. Um, let's see. There was another question that we had that has to do with 
with oh yeah so number nine on our question list here uh i'll give more context around this as well it's like we were wondering how do you give access to course in bulk after it's built and i think the obvious answer to that is you send them well they get access based on purchase I think this has to do with like, how can I manually give access to a lot of people? But I'm not sure if that's even, I don't even, I can't even think of a scenario. Well, like, I know exactly what you're talking about that. because okay. we wanted to do that and it, it's okay. just, it's not built yet. But essentially okay. I think the vision right now is that like, let's say you've got a thousand contacts, you just imported them over from your CRM, right? They're all in ClickFunnels 2.0 now. You built your course on hamburgers and you're ready to start teaching them. Um, you would go to your contacts tab you would select to do commit a bulk action, bulk enroll in hamburger course, apply. And that should be as, as simple as it gets. So um, bulk actions are coming down the pipeline. Correct. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So that's not um, so that's what that's what enrollments are, is basically to give somebody access for free who has not purchased it. Yeah. Un unless there's like a product or tag specific content within that course. Uh, and then they wouldn't be able to access it without going through the upgrade URL. And by the way, I'm looking at our feature gate stuff uh, here in the background and look what I found, module upgrade URLs and module upgrade and lesson upgrade, and they are off. So I'm gonna go talk with the team about where that's <laughs> at and- They're turned that off? Point. So they're in there, they're just working on it. <laughs> yep. So, it might even be done. I, I promise you guys, like, I... Wait, is off a good thing or a bad thing? Off to me would mean that off. nobody's working on it anymore. Oh, sorry. <laughs> serve serve false. What? They're not turned on in the system right now is what I took that to mean. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. There are they're upgrades, but they're not on yet. Correct. They're, they're not... They're not visible. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna sh okay. show see if I can show what we were running into. This has to do with this as well. Um, so on a module, if we click publish, it does give us these options here, uh, where we can schedule uh, to publish it now or schedule to publish. It does have these settings where it's auto enroll in existing students in this module and then send an auto enroll email notification. So I think that's really great. I'm not sure why it's on a module level and why we don't have these options on like an actual course level. Well, it but... appeared to me, so they got the restrictions in here the same as in 1.0. So the restrictions were at the section level in 1.0. Here, the restrictions are at the module level, which is essentially the same thing, correct? No, but why, but I would want to auto enroll. So I think this goes back to like being able to bulk enroll people, right? It's like, I want to yeah. auto enroll all of my existing students into the entire course, not just this one module. So um, if your course is published mm -hmm. um, and you go enroll people, we do what are called system, system email templates. And those system emails will send them a congratulations. You've just been enrolled in Susan's hamburger course. Mm -hmm. click here to go sign in and that goes out at a system level which is in your settings yeah. system email templates yeah okay so and there's a commenter that is making like just saying like that's for people so they're already enrolled in my course and mm -hmm. i go and i make a new i add a module and i want to auto yeah. enroll everyone into that and i'll and inform them that it exists now um and so that would that was one of our questions too is what does students mean? It's people that are already enrolled in this particular course, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and so then the question is still like, okay, I created a new course. And so the the action of getting people enrolled into that course would either be send them to where you're selling it so they can buy it and get enrolled right. into the course, or set up a workflow that puts them through a workflow and enrolls them that way. Cause there is that, mm -hmm. that tag and or action in the workflows um, or in the future, we'll be able to bulk add people um, a, as of right now, you can individually manually add people as well. So, okay. Like, so, am I getting all that? So correct? in one, in one point oh, then we would have used either purchases or tags. So here it's either purchases or enrollments. Because tags, you can let them in yes. for free. In them, here, you can let them in for free. Yes, to get them into the course. 
tags can also they sh and we, we will be setting it up like this if, if we don't and we're doing a huge mistake but tags should be able to unlock content for people as well okay yeah i wonder if one of the things might be because like where were we just at in here um there was where was i at there was something about tags for organization and that shows up in many places right tags to organize your mm -hmm. Images, tags to organize. I think I was on a lesson or yeah. You had, or uh, you had just you had, you had just found it in the products too. There was tags. Yeah, there. yeah, that was where it was at. So there might be um, a little bit of maybe they're reassessing. Like maybe that's one of the reasons they took it down. So there, there's going to be two different types of tags, and that could get confusing for people. Tags for organization, or is it a tag giving somebody access to something? So we'll just, you probably want to be careful with that moving forward. As Noted. Well. Yeah. All Same right. with the sections and modules thing. <laughs> um, okay, let's move along. I think we have covered, we got we got that covered. That one's covered. Oh, I think you just talked to, about this too, Jimmy. It's a system email that gets sent out when there's a new course, a new module published inside of a course. Um, yes, there, that, you, that you, question you, specifically says when a course is published. Yeah, which is not a system email. You you would have to like go and send your own marketing email to tell people that there's a new course, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So if if the course gets published, um, nobody's enrolled on it yet, right? So then you got to go either bulk enroll them or have them opt in, go through workflow, or have them buy a product that grants access to the course. Yeah. In which yeah. case, they'll get the follow up email that says, "Hooray, you got access to this thing." here to sign into it cool okay. so to answer andrea's earlier question then because she said she wanted to be able to basically have an opt-in but send them into a, a membership so in this case here you could have them opt in and then enroll them into free access and then they roll straight into the straight into the course but i think yeah. though there i think she was trying to avoid having to log into the membership so in the way it's set up right now, you would do an opt-in, but then you'd have to send them still to the customer center page to create an account and log in and everything before they got into the membership. Which makes sense because I, I, I to be frank with you, Dan, I don't understand why you guys use the no password login thing. Um, but that's just my, I just don't well, understand it. Andrea came up but with that one today. With the, the 2.0 system, you could either have, they, like there has to be an account associated with the person. You have to have them create an account. So that account is going to have a password associated with it, or it's going to be the magic link sign in. Yeah. So if sure. they don't want to create a password, they can do the magic link sign in. Where we've used, where we used the no email access was only when we were running people uh, from a hub out to tracks. And so there we use the no email, but, um, we have, we don't need to do that in 2.0 though. Um, you can't do it. Well, you don't need to do it. In no, you don't need to, right. right because right. now you have multiple Because once they're logged in, one yeah, once they're logged in, you can bounce them anywhere you want that they have access to. Sorry. We're getting really geeky over here with our 1.0 custom stuff that we do. Um, just trying to understand how it's going to translate over. Okay, I think we actually, oh, we lost Jimmy. But I think we actually covered all of our questions. Um, are there any that have popped up in the comments that, um, and he's back. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I went to go open up a new tab and I actually hit command <laughs> R instead of command T. Oops. <laughs> You're good. I was just saying that I think we actually got through all of the questions because even this last one is on here. We already talked about that with Dan about the well, lesson I will. I will be completely honest with you. I am still confused on that. And what I was going to do is get into my account and see if there's some, I'm going to go to the themes and see if I can build some stuff out and get them to actually populate then into that, that page where I have one where I have one available and see if I can get some other things to populate yeah. in there. And then after that, if I don't get it to work, uh, should I shoot a video to support? Or should I shoot a video over to you? What should you can, I do? If I can't you can message me. Like I'm happy to grind on that with you. And also what you're trying to do is functionality that we clawed back because it got really messy with what our marketing team was trying to do. So to prevent the mess, we clawed, what you're trying to do back. And so if you 
or doing your work around of like, okay, well, for every variation of a module template that I'm trying to do, I'm going to make an additional theme and then doctor up that new theme to fit what I'm trying to plug in over here. Like it works, I guess. It, if you like clutter. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it, I don't know that you're, that Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think that you're talking about having a unique theme for everyone, but a unique template, right? Like, well, so like um, a gift theme, like, the way that you would accomplish that. Well, my, okay. my, okay. my, my real question is, is so, uh, well, let's, let's just take a 2CCX program as an example. There's at least two, if not three different ways that they display the content on the screen. And so my question then is, um, you know, I want to, I want to do the same thing. So I want to have two, I mean, Susan, if you pull up the two CCX or the funnel builder, it's the same thing. Yes. Um, if you can pull that up, uh, because we, we, we know that we know the sidebar is hard coded. We know that we know that the success path is hard coded, but that was built. I do believe on a lesson page. And so they would have had to have a template for that because they use it in multiple places then they have the template for just your generic lesson. And then I think there was a third instance as well. Uh, if you go to getting started and then, so, okay, so this page right here. So let's just, let's just stop here. So before this page would have been the customer center page with the three or four different courses that Susan would have. Okay, so it's right there. So now click on the funnel builder. So that's your customer center page. So now this is your blog, your your course homepage, correct? Jimmy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it should be. Okay, because he's muted. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> That's why we can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Of course. Uh, okay, so this is the course homepage. By the way, we can we can see this through the URL as well. So I, if I look at the pathing up there, forward slash courses, forward slash course title. Mm -hmm. Okay, so courses is the home page. Course is a module page. No, here, let me back up. Okay, so we're at customer center. Customer dash center is the customer product. center show view. So, now okay. you just clicked into a course. So this is the course home for the funnel builder two comma club right. uh, course. Right. Yeah. Okay. So now click on getting started. That should just that's just a drop down. We know that's HTML that's put in there. So now click on success path. So in order to do this, this is all custom coding to build this page. All of the, the design of this, you mean? Yeah, because actually, if you look at the code, each one of those boxes is actually a section that was, I didn't, I didn't look at the JavaScript, but it's actually a section. So then they would have needed the JavaScript to inject it into those places along the way. That's how they did it. They made a bunch of rows and then injected sections into them. That's how they built that. Uh, okay. But that's not so. So this is a lesson, I would guess, at this point here. So it says what's it, so it still says courses up at the top, and then funnel builder, and then funnel mm -hmm. builder secrets, and then yes, yeah, so you you are looking at a. Um, ooh, that's actually a good question. I think that the lesson them? titles right here are titled module. Um, okay, so the type the this here. Right. If you click on that, it does actually take you to a lesson page. So this may be a module page they built this on. Then you can't. Oh, is that what a module page is for? It's not necessarily what it's for, but <laughs> no. it doesn't mean they build it on here. Remember, he said the marketing I'll, team. I'll click it, but I'll crazy try not on to them. show anything. <laughs> okay. So this is a lesson page. So here's our breadcrumbs now. So we've got, we're in the Funnel Builder and 2CCX. Funnel Builder Secrets is the... So this is your standard, this is your standard straight out of the box lesson template right here. Lesson theme, whatever you guys want to call yeah. it. So this yeah. is your lesson theme right here. The mm -hmm. page prior to that, frankly, the way they built this thing, it could be anything. It could actually have been just a page that they built in the funnel editor or something. Or it could be a standalone page because, again, it's not the, the navigation on the left-hand side is not dynamically created based upon uh, the content in the course. 
So I guess technically this could be any page you wanted it to be. I think the lesson here is as you're building out your course in 2.0, don't use this one as a, here's what you could do because it's not what you can do. Mm -hmm. This is mostly coded at this point. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking at their hierarchy right now and there's some stuff that's not 100% lining up with what I'm seeing on your screen. Okay. Okay, now open up the Funnel Builder uh, Foundations tab because I think everything under there then would probably most likely uh, just click on one. So that says module, module one, but they're talking a training module there. Okay, so, well, you clicked on it and it didn't do it, but again, I keep forgetting. It doesn't navigate this, to this anywhere. Is not, this is not a navigation. Uh, but I um, think that's how it works. In, I don't know this, but I think isn't that how that works in here too? So in Did there, you know actually, module? it'll... It'll navigate you to the module show view, and okay, the module which show is the view, module page, yeah. which is found when you go to your the courses site. Not that one. This one. Is it that one or is it this one? It's uh, oh, course this home. This one. This one. There we go. There you go. This page here. Yep, that's the guy. Which I was adding this on earlier, and uh, oh, it just it just loaded. Okay, so this is module title and all modules. That would be if that should only show something if um, you have a nested module. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. I think that's why it gets a little confusing. Is so you have to wrap your head around like okay. It says it's a module page, but it's not really going to show me all the modules. It's going to show me the modules that are nested within this module. Well, actually, yeah. it's just a, just a headline element, so there's nothing dynamically being created anyway. I think this is also part of Andrea's older account and may not have like the most recent. Theme this inside. yeah, You're this particular workspace is an old one. Yeah, and so our our templates and stuff are not newer templates on this particular workspace. I should probably jump into but, a different workspace when I'm showing stuff. For this example's sake, like all you would want to do at this point is just say like uh, this uh, this module's nested modules or just nested mm -hmm. modules right there. And then you just add in a uh, module collection element and it'll show you uh, those nested modules or sub modules. Great, great term. I like that word better. Um, and then that would be modules course colon modules and then the collection, collection. yep and, and then you, you know in that add in that stuff that, uh the video that todd put out the other day he pulled up an element because he was talking about courses and yeah that. jimmy you're the one that dropped it in there so he was talking about doing the courses and he pulled up an element that i know i've seen it once but i can't find it again it was like way down at the bottom and i don't even remember what it was called I meant to rewatch that video before we got on this call today. Um, okay, mine's mine's having some issues, so but we get what you were trying to tell me to do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, he pulled Maybe, in a weird element. Uh, do you have any recollection of what I was, what I'm talking about? Sorry, say <laughs> that again, like, Dan. What was well, he basically? About? I mean, you watched you watched the Todd's video the other day, right? Um, so yeah. in there, at one point, he's building out a course. And he's like, oh, okay, and you want to pull in this thing so you can put in, like, dynamic content or something. And like I said, I know I've seen that in there before, and now I cannot find it anywhere. because it was for like the, fake, Oh, for the modules. I don't know if it was I for a module or a lesson. or He did it for the modules page first, and then it's the lesson. So, like, I think that it's going to be the same thing no matter where you're at, right? Let me... Well, it, one I... It may well it might be in the blogs. I don't know, it might be in everything. I have not seen it in the editor itself, uh, which because that really probably wouldn't make any sense to put it in the editor. This isn't where I want to be. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> I get a little lost sometimes. We're gonna go to a module page because I think I do remember like, oh, I never thought to put dynamic content onto a module page, and that was the first thing that he showed. Um, so we go here, module lessons. Yeah, so it was just an element that he pulled in. But this is the page that's giving me some trouble, so it might not work. 
Um, we'll just, yeah, just, send, just come add a new thing. Um, dynamic slots. Okay, that was what it's called. Content body. And then he went back to a, the module settings. And then there was a place to add in content, just like you would a lesson. So we'll navigate over to our modules now. Okay, so that that may or may not be available in the lessons. It is. Or, this is how you add lesson content. Okay. Since we're doing it on a module page. We're doing it on module level instead of a lesson level. Mm -hmm. Can you add more than one? Because right like I said, the less the lesson I was working the lesson theme I was working on that I completely rebuilt and messed up. When I went into the theme, it did have a big gray box that said something about putting in dynamic content or something. Okay. Um, so I think Dan needs to be caught up on how the lessons work. So we're going to have a little lesson here. <laughs> okay. okay. So now, so I think we have old accounts, Dan. And so all my, of our mine was supposed no, actually, old. I just created myself a new, a new workspace a new, last week. But the, but I think even I don't I could be wrong on this, but I think even the the templates in like the newer templates are missing the dynamic content box on the templates. So I just added that dynamic that content body, and now I have this spot. So I think maybe this is the the stem of all the root of all of your problems. Well, <laughs> yeah. So right. I want to back through that really fast, Susan. The okay. module pages do not have that dynamic they, content section. They don't. You're right. We, I think that the lesson ones might also be missing it, but I might be no. Right all there. the lessons have a dynamic content okay. body, um, and we are the assumption here was that you wouldn't be putting in dynamic content on a module by module basis but instead that on a per lesson basis you might have an additional like uh go here buy this amazon product or like go to a uh, google drive download my spreadsheet or something like that you know um well i guess for me as somebody who has to play with everything and wants to build my own stuff um i'm i'm going to be honest with you i i don't like being handcuffed so much by these themes if you're telling me so i i have one theme basically for my modules and i have to use that and i can't change it or i can't put in dynamically updated stuff for each individual one i mean you can you can so so sorry uh susan just had that pulled up that like that um module show view had a dynamic content yeah right there section. yeah she oh, happens to be doing yeah. the lesson one but a second ago she had the dynamic content on the module page right so this is a lesson template right and if for some reason anyone watching if you don't have this dynamically replaced element on your page you need to have that on there and then this is your template and i think i believe like you're going to be able to have more than one of these. Like this is a particular setup, but some lessons I may not have a video, so I may not want this video element on here. So I'd also have a template where I don't have some of this stuff on my page and you can go and on a lesson level, you can set which template you want to be applied to that lesson. So Dan, if you don't want any of that stuff on your templates and you maybe just want a header and a footer on your template, then just have a header and a footer. Okay. And then you would go to it, your... Yeah, and that's been my problem and that's something I'll work on um, this weekend Yeah, is seeing if I can create more of those themes. I, I know I'm like you, Susan. I want to keep calling them templates, but technically they're called themes in here, right? Um, let's look at it because I think it's called templates. Themes, themes have templates. Oh. Okay. So here, if I had, if these would were my template lesson template pages that I I go and create a few of them, save them. Hopefully they show up here, and then see like right here. Okay, where did you create these? I Those didn't are create across these. all the different themes. Those are the course lesson templates across all the themes that she has. So theme one, theme two, theme three, theme four, five, six, seven, inside of her account. Those are all different example course uh, lesson templates across those seven themes. So I have more than one theme installed on this workspace. Okay, so, so I have a lot showing. So you can only create one lesson template per theme? I don't. 
think so. Yes, current reality, oh, yes. And obviously, okay. like, I'm finding now that this is not the best experience. But what we ran into before was uh, people wanting to, to deviate 40 <laughs> different templates. And then how do you categorize and uh, keep track of all those different, like, layouts and, and and deviations from the original and before believe it or not it was on the left hand side of the editor it was it was in there it was it was um so we um pulled all that out and uh yeah so it's i i, I think i think this is going to warrant a little bit of discussion about hey this is this is just flat out going to be needed and how do we do it? How do we introduce this functionality in a way that's not going to overload or overwhelm? Uh, right. Well, and that was uh, that was part of my reason for wanting to get you on a little call with us here is so that, yeah. you know, we could uh, show you what we're seeing and, and just go, okay, this, you know, ain't quite, um, mm -hmm. you know, and get some ideas from you. And, and, and also to give you some feedback is, is really what yeah. that's about is feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, okay. and we, we tried not to swear too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I don't know if you were following what I was just doing, no. but I duplicated my, my lesson template. Okay. And that was already like in, brand new. And it ended up and now it's on my pages. standalone pages. Okay. So what Jimmy, you're saying is like, there isn't a way for me to make this part of my theme pages yet. Right. Mm, oh, um, actually, wait, yes. <laughs> yes, if you go to theme advanced uh, and then do the drop down for your specific pages. Um, okay. That's well, well, show me that because that's what I, I did That'll here. replace, hold on, let, let me get me through my whole okay. thing here because I think I'm we're in a good spot to work this out. <laughs> so if I were to do that and I were to go to my theme settings and the advanced settings and I were to make this standalone page, my, my page that I want to use for my lesson template, that would replace the one that I currently have set as my lesson template. Correct. But in the future, if I have one of these templates is set with like the video element, right? And then I have another template that doesn't have the video element and I want to oh, like do an overwrite of my lesson. So I'm going into my lessons in a minute here. Um, so my default one right now is my first template and then I have my duplicated one. Yeah. And if I wanted to apply my duplicated one that I've made look different, it is, it is showing here. So I can do this. Wait, wait how did you get that? To it show doesn't have to be in theme settings for it to show here is what I was trying to determine. <laughs> See, hey, I, that's cool. Well, hang on here because I did exactly what you did, Susan. I went into the themes I duplicated one, gave it a new name, and I'm not I'm not seeing anything. I see one thing in that. So again, it may just be my account. So you might need to yeah reach out to customer support. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Actually, Dan, now that I've seen exactly what Susan just did, I'll I'll jam with you uh, at some point. And well, after this, I'll shoot you a quick I'll shoot you a quick Loom video of what I'm seeing yeah. and shoot it over to you, and then we can go yeah. out there. Because I'll tell you, when they did the switch over from, because uh, you had you had a look of puzzlement on your face a, a few minutes back when we said something about uh, old account versus new account. When they changed over at Funnel Hacking Live and gave everybody else access, our original accounts that we had were all jacked up. We didn't have yeah. half the Jimmy, stuff, and so Jimmy in, knows he's the one that went and fixed that for okay. us. Okay, so <laughs> in order to, to get attention. in order to get a new one, I had to open up a new workspace. But then my old workspace turned back on, but I'm I'm in a workspace I created two weeks ago, and I'm still seeing the same issue. Mm, so okay. it may, maybe I'm still working off an old version or something. Did you, um, did you buy into Inner Circle yet? If you do that, I can give you the good account. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Well, there's, there's this guy... Jokes. Well, there's this guy, Jimmy, in Atlanta that I, I need to send my uh, kneecap busters down to get some money from. So um, once once they come back with my hundred grand, I'll uh, I'll send it over to you. Sounds great. Sounds like a choice <laughs> fellow. Sounds like a deal. 
I love but it. I'm just doing a quick test. I'm in. Um, I'm in two CCX and funnel builders. I should at least get it somewhat okay. Mm. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. I'll go. I'll, I'll box Russell. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I think my last question that I want to just know the correct way of doing this is, and we're about to get there. So I just edited my second lesson template theme, okay. not theme template. And I want to go in and view it as a user so that we can see like, oh, this lesson has this template and this lesson has this template. Let me go make sure that I actually published the lessons. Um, but then my, I want to know the correct way of like going in and viewing as a, I guess I have to just go and create a login for my customer center. And then I just log in with that. Is that the right There's way to do There's a this? default contact on the workspace um, that should work for you. So if you just go to, well, I'll, I'll say this first. So did you, did you associate this new template to a, to a lesson yet? I think that I did. I'm going to double check that here. We're going to, okay. So I have two lessons that are published. Okay. Hit the settings this, cog and then we'll want to, yeah, yeah. this one I believe is, Oh, I thought I applied it here, but maybe I didn't. So we want this one. Oh, did it just pop up? Okay. 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 So here's the one. It doesn't have a video or anything. I do not have content. So let me actually. Did you need to save that page before you bounced out of it? Probably. Maybe no, that was because my it was. It had loaded with the correct thing, so she made no changes. Then it's fine. Okay. Okay. So it just took it a minute to load. Yeah. Okay. It's there. Okay. Um. Okay. So then. So now just go to uh, your course. Go to the top. Hit preview. Okay, I'm just gonna double check over here. Yeah, that one's the one, doesn't have anything on it. Preview, and then it opens up the customer. Oh, it didn't, oh, I might already, I don't know, am I logged into it or is that just because you're, you're here and it's working or? Yeah, it's your <laughs> default contact right now. Okay, I don't think that used to work for me, but. It didn't used to. It we're doesn't. going okay awesome <laughs> okay so this takes me to not the lesson i'm viewing my course home page right now which i put on this navigation there's my lessons yay okay uh, so i'm going to enter so this is the module matches my module here if i click the module it's going to take me to uh where i was making my lessons and then if I so click that one the on the lesson, left there should be your your different one, right? To, yes, this one should be my no video template. No video. And hot dog. This one Look at that. should have a video. It's working. So you did you did just create two different templates, and one of them is actually right now a standalone page. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely not what I'm seeing. Okay. 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 All right. So that's how it can so, work. So it's working. Okay, cool. I have hope now. You know. There is hope, Dan. There's hope. There's hope. hope. <laughs> oh, please. Awesome. All right. I'm just going to quickly look through our comments, see, because I know that there's some people that are asking questions and oh, maybe okay. we can just quickly do rapid fire. Um, and you can see them too over there on the side. So I think going back to question i think we a uh, drip feature i'll just put it up on the screen i think we talked about this maybe drip feature if being used for a challenge they may enroll on purchase but how do you only start drip on day one of challenges there's specific date related so there's the drip <clears throat> feature but then there's also the scheduler right they're yeah. two separate things yeah uh yeah you'll be able to schedule the release of content on a specific date if it's not there it's coming very soon. I mean, I know that challenges are a very, very important aspect of what we're trying to do with ClickFunnels. Sorry about that. Hello. Uh, <laughs> it's very, very important to us at ClickFunnels. And it's also very, very important to a large majority of our customers. So if um, the enroll or sorry, if the publish on specific date isn't here yet, then it's coming very, very soon. Oh, it's that's right a, that's another thing. Um, I don't see that either on mine, where it says drip or lock. I see publish or draft. I don't see drip. So it's or... only on modules. Are you looking on modules? 
Well, I thought I was. I'll have to check. Because I just realized that. Like, those, that's not an option on the lesson. So it has to be on a module level. Okay. Not All right. Level. I'll check that, too. Which, I don't know, maybe it'd be nice to have it also in lesson, mo lesson level in the future, but maybe not. So you just push, you click publish, and then it'll give you this option here of setting a date and a time. That's how you okay. do that. Um, All right. Also, the yeah. person, wait, 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 sorry, was that, was that for drip or was that for publish? Oh, I'm sorry. This was publishing. So yeah, so the person wants to know if it'll drip it? at a specific point in time. So drip options, it really is though. So, and this is based on when they've created their account or when they've yeah. gotten enrollment or purchased. What is that based off of? Um, they still drip access is, is based on when they get enrolled in the course. Enrolled. Okay. So either yeah. they purchased it and that's giving them enrollment or you've manually enrolled them or they've gone through a workflow. So somebody, somebody could get enrolled or purchase and not access the content for 14 days and 14 videos could have been dropped out to them before they get there. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm bringing up a couple questions here because, uh, there is, there's definitely a challenges component here, uh, that I don't want to say is being, it's not being overlooked intentionally, but I think that there's a little bit more feature or a little bit more functionality we should probably bring, uh, to the table here to make challenges a real thing. I think it would be nice if in the future we could have um, like lessons don't unlock unless the previous lesson has been completed or something like that. Like, like it's, and then maybe that is what locked is. What is locked? No, that's module. Well, but, uh, Jimmy said earlier that, that Jimmy said earlier, you can set a lesson though. I thought, um, to not show until they mark the previous lesson complete, but so that's currently not... we can't. It okay. Appears. So that's, yeah. just, that's not out yet. But that's a oh. future thing. Um, can you set, can you do me a favor? Can you set a few of these, just throw them all on a published really fast? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, that should, that should probably be sufficient. Okay. So let's okay. think really fast. So that quality meet one, can you click on that drop down? Mm -hmm. And can you, okay, hit it, hit draft and now select lock on the lesson. That's, that's a lesson you're not going to be able to. Yeah. Cause you, there isn't okay. that option Got on it. the lesson. Yeah. I okay. wasn't okay. sure if there was like a prerequisite for like the previous lesson needed Got to be it. published in order for it to be lockable or anything like that. But I, I, as we've been going through, I'm like literally just kind of feature dumping into our okay. courses chat. So we'll see. Awesome. Awesome. We'll see what people Um, say. And then this one here is a sub module and this one doesn't have all of the features of this. I don't know if that's needed. I'm just pointing it out. It does mm. allow for scheduling though and the enrolling stuff, but it doesn't offer all of the drip and lock stuff. Um, just an observation. Yeah. And okay, so quickly going through comments. Um, uh, someone asked about assessments and quizzes inside of courses. I think you guys are working on a survey feature, right? Yes, assessments. Okay. Assessments. Quizzes. Assessments are coming. Okay. And this particular person says inside of courses. So just note there. Mm -hmm. um, question, will we be able to just show specific products on the customer center? Yeah, there is a way you can choose to have it show in the customer center or not show in the customer center. I, I don't know where I saw that, but I know I saw that. It's on the product edit form. Product. Product. Okay. And that, um, that, that specifically is like, it's in the top right. It's product uh, visibility or channel visibility and you can set it live for, well, eventually I think it'll be for like the store, uh, then for cart funnels. And then you can obviously associate a product with, uh, with a funnel, um, and then your customer center as well. Yeah. So there's these options here. Um, second question. Do we answer this already show and support upsell locked? Will we be able to decide the design? 
in order on that page. I'm not sure what this was referring to. Yeah, uh, I can actually, I can answer it. So it's an upgrade okay. URL. And so the styles will all be there. Um, it'll be just like a customizable checkout form. Um, and yeah, you'll, you'll check out on that. Get access to the thing. Okay, what are nested courses for? We were talking about nested modules and that's exactly what I was just showing. Um, nested courses, measuring course, then course. Was it on this one? Oh, actually, it well, yeah, there's, but it was. Yeah, there's nested made, modules. I, think, I can't see it, on my end here, it just says Facebook user, but yeah. this person may just be um, confusing the concept of a nested course for nested modules within my we were i remember seeing that comment come in and it was when we were talking about nested modules so it was okay. just like it gives you extra like i think of modules as like categorizing and organizing your lessons and so like for mine i have my main module is how to make the best burger and then i have something yeah. i actually think i'd organize this differently if i were to actually do it but then i made like a sub module of like okay condiments for different flavors but i have like more lessons that i want to put under there so it's just like if you think of like a bullet a standard bullet point outline system it's just like that it just made me think of those pop quizzes that were like oh it's only a four question pop quiz it shouldn't take you too long it's like one a b c d two a b c three <laughs> e, f, G. right Right. There's like, oh, there's only four lessons. And then you open up one of them and it's like eight other lessons inside of that one. <laughs> well, um, it, it maybe don't do that to people. It's the old line, if you ever saw the movie um, Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield from back in the early 80s, uh, the professor that doesn't like Rodney at the end, they have to give him a, a quiz. And he goes, well, I only have one question for you in 27 parts. And <laughs> like, uh, yeah, so it almost kills him. <laughs> and, and then the answer the answer to it is the number four that's the answer yeah <laughs> <laughs> um no. i do have this next question up has anyone got the podcast element to work and they were referring to what todd was showing in the video that you shared and i my, it was my understanding that it was being worked on and but not quite ready yet is that yeah. true or not true um Honestly, I haven't touched it that much either. I okay. I know that Todd showed it in that video, um, but then Probably I don't remember if he went to like a live rendering of that page or not. I, um, I think he showed it working, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't, I think he was just showing it to us, guys. I don't think he was saying that we have the ability to do it yet. I think he was like, let me show you this cool thing I'm working on, um, which is awesome. I love to see that stuff, but I don't think that that we have it the ability yet um i could be wrong but um it looks like someone else commented that maybe that's also true so if you don't see it it's probably not there but when uh, we get closer into actually building a real course we will see where we're at and we'll show it to you guys it's technically it there right because okay. it's like accessible as an element but then people are asking like okay well how do i actually configure this thing um in which case, yeah, there's a video that that Todd has recorded, um, kind of showcasing it. I don't yeah. remember how he actually went and did that off the top <laughs> of my head right now. We might have to rewatch and then play around with it. Cool. Well, <clears throat> okay. And did you say Todd had put out like a two hour long video on something? Maybe, maybe I misheard that. Nah, never mind. I, don't, I, tell about, I don't know about that. <laughs> but yeah, so I see one last thing here. It says, when you choose a course, it has three types of courses, and it only used to have two. I'm wondering, do they put in an, a third course now? Third course type? You know, where you could pick like nested or basic, I think they had been before. So I don't know if they put in a third course. They just, type. they moved that blank. There's a blank that, you know, when we were looking at it before of like create your course, Blank was just a little button up in the corner, and now it's like a full like box that it's more mm. obvious that you can start with. Blank. I think that's all oh, really that oh, happens okay. there. That makes sense. Yeah, it's just the same three options. It's just more obvious. Yeah. Yep. That's. Um, that's great. Okay. Did we get through everything? Ever will there ever? Yep. We talked about quizzes. Quizzes, lesson level access, self interest block lesson, professional leaders. Great job, guys. And three types of courses. Okay. Teaching the dead. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. 
was uh, like, hoping you awesome. could see that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for giving us your time, Jimmy. We really thank appreciate you. it. I, for one, have a way better understanding of what's happening and cool. I feel more confident in my ability to make videos for everybody else. Um, and I, and I feel yeah, confident think, in, in the fact that I think it's just my account, not me. So that makes me feel better that it's not necessarily operator error. So. <laughs> well, and then we'll, it's not we'll like see. as broken we'll exactly. as you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes yeah. by the way like when i'm talking about like old old accounts versus new accounts really i'm i'm really talking about like the themes and template pages they got passed along to you guys on in the early stages mm -hmm. so if anyone has any accounts that are pre fhl like you guys have templates that might just be old maybe go if you haven't like done too much work go install a new theme um and play around with that and see what what options are available there i i was in w one account the other day that still had this like on the course homepage. it was like to do migrate podcast element that which is something fine, yeah. todd put in there like probably it's like a to -do last list. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i thought i kind of was like i think this is like a placeholder for something that they were gonna come back and put in here yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no it's just a really old page template from the, yeah. the dawn of time so yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And, and then if you do notice anything broken in your account where you're like, they showed that I should be able to do this, but I cannot do this, then reach out to support because that like, this is beta. Oh, actually, I don't know. Or is it still officially beta? It feels like it, it should still be beta. Beta. <laughs> it's beta. Beta la launched beta. Um, they need that feedback. If you're having an issue with your account, yeah. please let them know about it so they can fix it and improve it for everybody else. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Dan? Appreciate oh, it. No, nope, that, nope, that's it. Just thanks to Jimmy for jumping on with us here. Totally. This has been cool. I had fun. It was a good time. Yes. It was a long time coming. A whole three months that we... <laughs> we, we, we may, we may uh, need to have you back next week once we get, get a little further in. Oh, let me send you my Stripe <laughs> checkout form. Exactly. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> awesome. Okay, everybody, we're going to sign off. Thank you again, everyone, for watching, too. And hopefully this was super helpful to you. And we will see you at some point in the respective groups that are watching right now. <laughs> All right. Bye. Sweet. See you guys.